We've got an impromptu poker craft podcast with the legend Phil Smith. <laughs> Fifteen bracelets, right? 15. Pretty impromptu, is Pretty right? Impromptu. Because you uh, texted me what, like a uh, twenty minutes ago? I got up or something, and yeah. you're like, "Hey, and I have a, I have to go film all day, and then I have a, a big surprise party." Which is the whole reason I came to LA. Everybody's like, "Are you here for the WPT?" I'm like, "There's a WPT. There's live at the bike." <laughs> okay. Well, I had to come here. I had to come here for a surprise birthday party Saturday night. Okay. And uh, because of that. Um, I knew I had to be in Vegas Wednesday, so I hopped on my friend's jet out of Moffett Field, which is incredible because Moffett's a military base, and you know Larry, you know Larry and Sergey have their jets there, but not many other people. Google founders for you guys who don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's cool. I've flown in and out of Moffett a few times now. It's pretty cool, military. And so uh, left Wednesday at 4 p.m. Now flew to Vegas, did the dinner, played poker till 3, 4 in the morning. Went straight to Shadow Creek. Now we're talking, you know, one in the afternoon. Went straight from Shadow to the airport where I played high stakes poker all night um, at a casino in L.A. <laughs> and um, and won the biggest pot of my life. How but I was, was already exhausted. How much was it? About six hundred thousand. Okay. But I had one hundred percent of my money, and uh, it was just a crazy hand that that sometimes they come up, you know. And uh, you want to talk about it? I mean, I bought in. I bought in for three hundred thousand of my own money, which I never do. Even when I was playing in the five ten game on Poker Go, Rob's home game. Yeah. I only had. I was intending to have one hundred eighty thousand of myself for the four hundred I was going to risk, but we sold too much, so I only had one hundred thirty thousand or something. So, even in that game, over four days. So when I won four hundred thousand, I won. I was getting some bonuses for winning, but. Maybe I won 150 for myself. So for, to risk 300 in a game is a lot for me. And, uh, you know, you figure you buy it and you're playing one, two, four. But then the straddle's on and the straddle's on. And now it's like every hand, eight and 1,600 straddles. And, uh, I mean, big. every hand. And it's a big game. And <laughs> you, you think you're never going to play a big pot because I'm a, a really good player. And I know I'm pretty good at PLO, but I'm not. I'm, I don't even know if I'm good. <laughs> Let's put it that way at that game. And, uh, you know, it comes up where I have aces, double suited, ace, ace, deuce, four, and uh, a smooth call. A 3,200 straddle. Guy behind pots it to 18,000. Okay. One or two calls. Maybe one call. Two calls, I think. And so I could make it like 90,000. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I got to do it, right? <laughs> so that's a crazy thing is you find yourself with $90,000 and before the flop with ace, ace, deuce, four, double, and you get called by two people. <laughs> that, like, that's oh how I went God. broke. Uh, let's see. Let's hear your story. It sounds like it's a better So ending. now comes <laughs> jack, six, three, two hearts. Okay. The first guy moves in for 57000 He's short. That's a great flop, though, for my hand. I mean, yeah, you can't ask. Draw? I and do good. not. Now, I'm not saying great flop, but I mean, it's a, it's a hand I have to go with now, right? Jack, six, three. I have deuce, four in my hand. I can't shot, fold. Yeah. I have 90,000 in there. Yeah. <laughs> so the other guy has 150 left, 140 left. There's nothing I can do. So, But I, I don't think it's a bad flop. I mean, you, know, you don't want 8, 9, 10. You don't want... <laughs> yeah. I, There's so I mean, many flops that are just bad. You don't want the jack, jack, four. <laughs> you know, just so many hands that just smash people. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm all in now. Okay. And I'm just thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be down 280000 if this doesn't hold. We run it twice. The first board comes out uh, a seven and a four. So now it's three, four, six, seven, jack. I scoop it with aces. Oh, my God. Did <laughs> they both have kings or kings No. Kings? We're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at uh, six eight nine ten, and ace king queen, queen eight, eight double suited. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So he has enough flush draw now. If I could have gotten rid of the six eight nine ten, I would have won sure. all of it. Oh okay. So the second board comes a nine. He makes two pair and then a queen. But the good news for me is the side pot I scoop because he misses that flush draw twice. So you know, and I mean. Uh, the turn was a diamond, so I picked up the nut flush draw on that on the second board. I mean, a diamond would have been sweet, an ace would have been sweet. I mean, there are some cards that would have I'm going to pick up another two hundred and fifty thousand with, you know. Sure. I mean, a lot of us envy 
having a pot that big, but I mean, you, uh, you, you, you want that million dollar pot, right? <laughs> the biggest pot of your life, right? And and the biggest pot of your life, and you're all, and you bet most of it with aces in Omaha on a Jack 6 3 board. It's such an ironic thing, you know? Right. Like, I mean, I, I could see playing, you know, 400K pot where I have aces in the hole. And anyway, that held up. And so now, fast forward to 3 in the morning, and I quit. And uh, some cool people in the game that I that I love, that can I really, you, really like. And can so you they, mention them? <laughs> no, I can't mention names. Okay. So then I say, uh, they're Justin like, oh, Bieber. they're like, hey, you're not, they're like, give us some notice. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I say I'm going to play another hour. Now that is not, you know, when you quit and then they make you play another hour, that never works out. So I'm right, like, right, yeah. You know, and I never counted the chips. And But at the end of the night, I'm up 164. Um, I just didn't win many pots for, for, for four, five, six hours. I just didn't win many pots. It was, I never got hot. Um, but the ace is held up, and uh, that's the important thing. <laughs> it's good night, so now it's six thirty in the morning. I'm texting you. <laughs> yeah. So imagine I I've left at four p.m. I remember. Yeah. I played all night in Vegas. Played yeah. golf at Shadow, and now all night, and I have to film with you guys at one. Yeah. So uh, film five hours, and I just at live at the bike. I don't think I've ever lost on the show. I've won forty. I've won thirty. I've won tw- I've won a bunch, and I stick to my game plan. Buy in 5K, playing 1600 for two hours, lose yeah. it. You got it good, and then you got cooler. Like I even said it, you know, you got cooler. Then buy another 5K, and and I have 1100 in front of me, and everybody's laughing at me. You know, you're the greatest, haha. And this is my routine. And I'm like, don't worry, I'm gonna win 20 or 30. Well, there's 40 minutes left, and I still have 1200 in front of me. And I said, don't worry, things. Are, and the next thing you know, it's 23,000. Yeah. But unfortunately. I made a a bad call on one hand, and then I got a little coolered. And, but you know, when you when you have twenty three thousand in front of you in a game, usually I'm very uh, all right. I'm gonna win at least five or six. You know what I mean? I'm usually in super defense mode because it's smart, and you know you're quitting soon. It's smart to be a little defensive, and uh, you know, and I blew it. And I just think you know, two or three days playing these huge pots, and two or three days of not paying attention. So. I got cooled on the last hand, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then I was like, "All right." I thought, I said to myself, "I lose this. I'm quitting," because I was truly exhausted. Sure. No. And I got no. So now, now I have to go film this show, celebrity. You know what? I want to get the show right. Since yeah. Shout out the show. <laughs> might as well shout out the show. Get it right for them. Also, you had fans from AP Bio, the show. <laughs> Came up to you. Yeah, AP Bio went out to dinner with a guy from AP Bio. Um, really liked him. Good guy. Celebrity Poker Gala, and I think it's on Amazon. Okay. So I'm going to be a coach. For me, this kind of show I like. I show up at, you know, they're sending me a limo at 11 a.m., which is early. But I'll film till 6, where they have dinner. And then I can make my surprise party by 8. It's a packed schedule. great. Yeah, and then my friend's jet leaves at 1045. So, <laughs> you know... <laughs> And, you know, and I'm like, well, I didn't say anything because, you know, when you're on somebody else's jet, you say, yes, sir. Right. You be on time. <laughs> you know, and they're flying in for the party, too. Um, they're flying in. And so, you know, I guess Santa Monica Airport, you're not supposed to leave after 11 p.m. And when you're private. So that's know, fine. So as we said, we got to party quick. You know, surprise birthday party. We'll probably have to leave at 10, 15. But the important thing is that I'm there for this friend. At ten, and so this is why the whole schedule came up. Otherwise, I would. Shout out been... to Antonio Espindiari. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> His birthday's in December. Yeah. I was at Antonio's fortieth. Yeah, and it was great. We were down in. Uh, uh, it was a really nice party, and I have a story there. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so that one was fun because uh, um, President Clinton was having an event mm. in town, and they're like, "Hey, Phil, come MC for us." What? Well, I've emceed charity poker tournaments that have raised fifty-six million dollars. Wow! That I've emceed, mm. and people are like, and so I've char- usually charged twenty-five thousand, but we've given like one point four million to charity. Maybe I've made nine hundred thousand emceeing the tournaments that have made money, so we're still way ahead in that. But you can't fly all the way to New York without charging something, and but I won't do events also that raise less than a million. So you have this charity model that used to be people would be like, oh, we're doing a charity event. And they'd, and they'd raise 100000 and give 10000 to the charity or 20000 to the charity. The ones I do, I get 25000 but I'm raising $2 million for the Clinton Foundation. 
two million for the Warriors Foundation. And actually, I do that one for free, and I do the one for President Clinton for free. And so now uh, they're like, hey, Phil, we'd love to have you come by. Mark Mazvinsky is Chelsea's hubby, and uh, <laughs> I love him. Shout out to him. <laughs> oh, he's a really good poker player, too, by the way. Um, uh, you know, Come uh, on we, live with the bike. Let's see how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> he's a really good player in these charity tournaments, and he might play in New York. But, but he's uh, just a really good guy, and we hit it off well. So I went there, and, uh, and, uh, and then um, I get a text do you want President Clinton to call Antonio to wish him happy birthday? Mm. So Antonio's well lubed up by the time I get to him. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, yo, dude, I'm going to have President Clinton call you. He's like, what? He's like, he's my number one in the entire world. And I'm like, well, okay, we're going to get a phone call. So Clinton calls him on his 40th birthday party, and Antonio's cool. in heaven. <laughs> you know, pretty cool. And I think President Clinton got managed to get mad at me that night. So... Don't you know, check raise him anymore. Okay. He got mad at me, which was, which I mean, and I told Mark, and he's like, "Don't worry, the big guy loves you, Phil." And I'm like, "God, how do you piss off President Clinton?" <laughs> and all I did is I was waiting for a picture for like ten minutes, and I'm like, "Let me get a picture." Why? Well, I, I think I interrupted him one other time, and he's like, "Now, Phil," he's like, "Now, Phil, can't you see I was talking to somebody?" And you shouldn't be interrupting me like this. And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> the one time in your life you're not, you're like, I'm Phil Hellman. <laughs> no. No, no. I mean, uh, I've hung out with President Clinton many times. Um, but, and he knows me and remembers me, which is great. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, he, <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought maybe, anyway, whatever. It happens. So, um, you have a lot of opinions, and I actually agree with like quite a few of them. And I think you're, uh, you know, people talk smack about you and don't give you proper credit. So one of them, one of your opinions is the all-time money list. How do you think it should be all-time tournament money list? Yeah, I mean, all-time. Re- it's bullshit. It's but now you know you watch professional golf and you see somebody who dominated for thirty years, and they get passed in ten years by somebody or five years. You know, and and. All they can say is, hey, that's great, you know. And so, you know, I mean, I think that's important for me to say that too. But what I don't like is this. You have 30 guys that travel all over the world that play 100 different 50 and 100K buy-ins. Not many of those players are actually up at the end of the year. They pass a lot of money back and forth, right? But their all-time numbers get jacked up. Antonio. (laughs) I was there at the final table, and I was at the final four of that one, where it was eighteen million for first. I could have been me just as easily. I, you know, I think I had. A, they flashed a screen up live on ESPN that I had had like I think zero premium hands, and Antonio had it thirteen just at that final table, and I still managed to make it all the way down to fourth. And uh, I guess it was two point eight million, but the all-time money list—you can't have you know a guy winning. You know, I mean, it's just, it's not right, you know. And, and Negreanu, who I, I think is a, a fabulous player, um, and he likes to underrate me. We, we, we love it. <laughs> My agent and I are just like, what is he thinking? You know, he, he posts stuff about me and No Limit Hold'em, but I think he's starting to give up. I just keep getting there and getting there and getting there. <laughs> Eventually, you just have to shut up, you know? How about a popularity contest? Like, who would get more viewership between you two? Are you a bigger draw or Negreanu? Negreanu says I'm bigger than he is. And, uh, but, I mean, I think he has a bigger Q rating in poker than I do. Okay. So, you know, we both kind of think the other guys might be a little bit bigger in the... Oh, okay. You know well, that's, I mean? that's so pretty we're, modest, we're both, guys. We're right. both pretty respectable there. I mean, we're, right. not, we're not, you know... I mean, he sees me, you know, I'm heading to the Oval Office soon. And, uh... You know, he sees me hanging out with all these super famous billionaires and all these huge celebrities. And, uh, and you know, and so he's like, wow. But I see him, you know, all over the poker world working really hard, creating all, all this amazing content. He does, yeah. And so, I mean, you know, to me, to me, Daniel loves me. He loves me. But people might not know that. They might not know that. Because... I do. <laughs> because he... You know, I mean, he'll he'll go and say something like, "What was it? Two years ago, he said, uh, he said, oh, Phil's not great at hold'em anymore.' Oh or yeah, he had like the that. list of like players well, I, that are better than you or something. Come on, like but that. I for I mean, come on. I I'm was, just I'm regurgitating what no, I saw course, on Twitter. I yeah. was playing with him. 
I just figured if I respond fast and I put pressure on him, he's yeah. going to respond. But I already had my next 10 responses dialed in. Mm. And so I kind of forced his hand. I said, name 40 players that are better than me. And we're going back and forth on Twitter. Yeah. It's not a war because we're not swearing at each other or whatever. <laughs> so he named 40 players. And then I said, listen, I'll take, I'll take, I'll, I'll bet 100,000 to 4 million for each year, 40 players. Okay. Every time I win a bracelet, I get 4 million. Every time one of them wins, it's 100,000. And uh, he immediately declined, and I think I called him and offered him two to one, mm -hmm. two hundred thousand right. to four million. So this not only am I going to take your list of forty, but I'll lay two to one on bracelets. Right. And uh, then he declined on that too. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about then? And he's like, well, uh, you, you might be, you might be better than them at, you know, empty multi-table tournaments and. Large well, fields. isn't that the point? I mean, you, you, you know, you're you talking about the same 30 guys who go and play with each other all over the world. Right. I, I bet that if I played with those guys all the time, I would end up winning mm -hmm. uh, some money. I don't know how much, but I'm for sure going to win. Might be the biggest winner after a couple of years. I'm not afraid. I see all the mistakes that they make. But my life is full. I can't be going. To, I don't want to go to Turks and Caicos for a sure. 250K tournament. Um, yeah, I can risk my own money or I could get staked by, you know, I made my friends four million. So it's easy for me. I could raise a million dollars in 20 hours easily, probably two million. And so, but I don't have anything to prove, you know. So, but anyway, Negranu, so he kind of backed. Anyway, by the way, I did win one bracelet since then. Okay. And may, I think maybe one of his guys did or maybe two. So it would be 3.8 million to. It's chopped. Uh, or no, I would have won. Prop of course, I get laid 40 to one. Oh, I thought you were getting. Oh, okay. Never mind. Go ahead. So yeah, I'd yeah. be. I, so he would have paid me four million right away, right. and then I would have paid him back two hundred. So I'm up three point eight million. But I also this year I had a fifth, and a sixth in no limit hold and a sixteenth in huge fields. Mm -hmm. Three finishes I can think off the top of my head that were really deep, and um, so I mean he was in jeopardy of another four million there. But w again, we didn't bet it, um, and I think you know I just keep Theoretical getting there. dollars. <laughs> I remember Daniel coming to me up in 08, 09, 10 and saying, oh, my God, you know, Phil, you're so behind the curve, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And, uh, and then he started studying with all these guys. And he didn't do anything for three years and was telling me I'm behind the curve all the time. <laughs> and so I just went ahead and, you know, just got deep, 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 deep and just kept doing my thing. And I think that Negranu is so talented He's such a great player. Here's the difference. I know he's great. Here's the difference between he and I. But I also know he's great because of he can read people. So they can't teach that. So I look at I look at what they're teaching GTO. I spend an hour looking at it. Not, I don't study every small detail. But I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing. Now how do I beat it? I'm not interested in what they're doing. I'm interested in how to beat what they're doing. I want to go to the next level. And there's something they can never teach, reading skills. And I know this. I've spent my whole life trying to teach other people to read. You can't do it. Either you got it or you don't. Now, you can improve. Everybody can, you know, you talk about Daniel yeah. Goleman and his book EQ. You know, great book. And, you know, learnable star qualities and uh, is, is, is what he talks about. And, and that's, you can, everybody can be better and better at reading. But, but it's really hard. I think there's a ceiling. So you had the heads up King of the Hill thing. I think it was Poker Night in America. You bluffed out Jungle. Was that part of your thing? <laughs> and you beat Doug Polk, right? You beat Doug Polk. I beat Doug. I mean, he he was in uh, when. Here's the thing. Everybody was playing No Limit Hold'em heads up wrong. Now, now. Oh, bang bang! I'm just kidding. Oh, they were so far off. So somebody like Art. Art had really good coaches. What's his last name? Art Papazian. Art Papazian had really good coaches, and so he won, he won millions of dollars playing all the top players' heads up because they're, they all played the game wrong. Mm. And I was just laughing. I couldn't believe that their theory said you're supposed to do this, and I don't want to get into specifics because there's still a lot of money to be made out there. And so when I, when I go to these heads up, I played one heads up tournament last year in January on the East Coast, flew and tired. I won it. 64 players, what did I have to win? Seven matches, bang, 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 five of the matches just were easy. There was a really tough one in there. And just boom, it's over. Because the world is being taught wrong. So this is a beautiful thing. So Art made millions. So I sent those coaches who were live at the bike commentators for a while. Who are we talking about? Matt Boyd and MJ. 
Yep, I sent them to Negranu. Sent them to my agent because what they're teaching is truth about No Limit Hold'em. And then and my agent said, hey, do you mind if I send them to Daniel? And I said, it's going to change Daniel's life. But yeah, I sent them to Daniel. I like Daniel. And so they did. They changed Daniel's life. And all of a sudden, Daniel's like, now I know how to play. But Daniel always says this. Now I know how to do this perfect. Now I need this perfect. Now, and I'm like, you're way off, kid. You're way off for years. But I don't want to teach him because he's too great. <laughs> so the coaches go to him. And they teach him. And, uh, and so Daniel knows exactly how to play almost perfectly heads up. You know, so do I. But there's not that many people. It's so easy. And so, but I mean, so you have people out there that are teaching people how to play dead wrong at No Limit Hold'em. And so people don't know this. They don't actually bother. They're just like, the young kids are like, oh, Phil sucks. We saw him play one hand bad on television. Or two hands bad on television. I'd like to, to see them play on television. And I'd see about 20. But that's not the way it works when you're a big target like me. Yeah. So they see that and they're like, oh, he sucks because he played this one hand bad or this other hand bad. Fine, no problem. Sit down at the table with me and see. And then, um, and so, where was I going with this? The right way to play versus... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so, you know, it's a whole generation being taught the wrong way to play. So I've been looking at the high rollers that they have, right? The only guy who plays really, really good strategy is Kerry Katz. And Kerry Katz is leading right now. He's not only poker's savior, but he's leading all the high rollers... Because he goes and he plays and he knows how to play right. They're all still doing GTO or some version of it and just getting crushed. And so, you know, I mean, I, I guess in one sense I left a lot of money on the table because I could have gone and just played my strategy and won a bunch of high rollers. But, I, again, I don't have time. Two months of the year I want to win bracelets. I think whoever wins the most bracelets and the most WPTs is going to be the greatest player of all time. Because those are fields you start at the same level. In cash games, we can't measure the greatest player of all time. Yeah, I mentioned... Do you know why? Because you could just buy in for whatever. <laughs> because we don't know how much money these people started with. Right. And, and playing in cash games, by the way, there are people that are just great at getting into the greatest cash games. There are people that are great at borrowing money. There are people that are great at making money in other areas and bringing it to poker. So at the end of the day, we don't really know who the greatest cash game players are. Now, I could name three or four, and you would probably agree, right? Uh, you know, names? David Oppenheim, great yes. great cash game player. Yes. Um, uh, Garrett Edelstein. <laughs> well, I mean, Garrett's really good at, uh, at you know, at, at, at No Limit Hold'em, for sure. Yeah. But we're talking when I when I think of oh you're talking about all time like, when I think of guys that are playing I'm talking about all timers mm -hmm. you know John Hennigan I'm talking about guys that can play Johnny every World, game yeah. yeah played with him many different games yeah. yep and so these guys that can play all the games great right and uh, and so we we do to some of those guys are but it's really difficult to determine who the greatest cash game we've had David Benjamin's an amazing player he won twenty million dollars straight. He had 10% of himself for the first $5 million, then 20%. Then when he finally started taking all of himself, boom, he lost three, $4 million and went down. I think he has amazing talent. But, I mean, you know, uh, but, 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 you know, he hasn't done well the last couple of years. And so there's just a list of players that, you know, that we all – but I think Benny Mann has amazing talent. Yeah, he's played PL on the show, and he's done a lot of thin value bets, like – in PLO, it's like when you value bet bottom two and get called in PLO, that's skill, you know. Oh man, he's a great player yeah. for sure. But I'm trying to trying to what I'm trying to say is, some people are great at borrowing money, so so we don't really know. You, right. you and I could name three or four great players, sure. but we'd have to debate everybody else. That's fair. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. And so, yeah, and so that's harder. But in tournaments, we know, you know, and uh, you know. Um, and so, I mean, that's that's where I'm trying to, to do it, specifically World Series tournaments. I mean, last year I had a, a second, a third, a fifth, a sixth, a sixteenth, you know, and I, I skipped a lot of the 10Ks where the fields are, you know, where the fields are a little bit tougher. tougher yeah, but it's smaller. easier, yeah. Easier to, yeah, I know what you mean, to score highly. Mm -hmm. um, so you and Antonio Spendiari have a rivalry. I know it's friendly, but how is that, like, you know, as you guys have grown older and matured, how has that developed? <laughs> I did play with Antonio the other day. I'm not going to tell you where or when. And uh, I'm going to see him tonight. And we just have a great relationship. Um, he did 
smash me at his house. Um, this one really hurt. The day before I'm going to MC the event for the Kardashians, at which I invited him to, and he was part of that show too, the Keeping Up with the Kardashian show. So the day before, I show up to his um, house to play 510. It's a Sunday night. Ah, 510 is hard for me to play anyway. But I show up, and uh, I went to, he just gives me 10,000 the first few hands in a 5-10 game. And I'm laughing to myself. There's no way I can lose. I won 50,000 earlier in the week. I won 450,000 a couple weeks before in the tournament. And, but then I'm a little bit more vulnerable, right? But I should have just gotten out of there with my win. Maybe I won 75,000 that week. But all of a sudden, we're heads up at 3 in the morning, and the blinds are 100-200. And then 200, 400. And I lose 111,000. And I'm so mad. And I mean, I don't think he particularly outplayed me. I mean, I, every time I had jacks, he won with 6 8 suited. He wasn't ever going to bluff me, you know. And, and so, but I, he's a great heads up player, but I, I'll play him all day. Um, what yeah. about the taser thing? You guys are supposed to play heads up in the. I told him I'd play him heads up uh, tournament format. Okay. Because I know how to play perfectly. I've learned, I've, you know, and I know this, and I don't think he does know that. So I think I'll have a huge edge. And he wants to just play me where we have 300,000 each and we have 100, 200 blinds. That's fine too, but it's not going to be as profitable for me playing him two hour matches where I'm just, I think I'm just going to crush him. But it's for the taser on camera. <laughs> you got to play for that. We talked about that. Nothing's been confirmed there. Um, but anyways, beats for 111, and that hurt. And so now it's 8 in the morning, and I'm going back to the bike in a limo. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to MC something at noon for the Kardashians. What an important day. I'm coming in three hours sleep, but I've done that before. Some of my best commentaries when I'm three hours sleep, so whatever. It's because you're actually honest. You're delirious and honest. Right? I'm always honest. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, I was a little bit bummed out. Fortunately, I, I, I had my own TV show on August 20th or something last year, and I won 300 and some thousand, which made me feel better um, over over two days and made the customers at Ustake.com a lot of money. I've made the Ustake customers $200,000. <coughs> Ustake.com, I've won 12 out of 14 packages. And every time I post a package and broke even once, Sell out. every time I post a package... The, the 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 haters come in and say Phil, I can't believe Phil's charging 1.3 or 1.4 or 1.5. I've lost once. I lost 10,000 once where I asked for 1.7, even though my numbers are like 4.0 in hold'em tournaments. Lifetime, look it up. I'm I'm the little speck on the chart. Here's the rest of the world, including Negranu. I'm the speck on the chart in No Limit Hold'em at the That's series. Outside the cluster. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And so, but then they all make fun of me anyway. And so I've made, the, and so it's, it's, it's so ironic because, again, I think it's 11 out of, th broke even once, so I won 11 out of 12 packages for 200000 and they make fun of my makeup. They're just such idiots. It's unbelievable. And then um, when Tom Dwan hit the scene, you guys were in the heads up thing. Do you have any comments about the the very first time the tens against aces thing? You want to recap in the Tom Dwan is amazing. I, I love him. So, <laughs> so he came and filmed with me a few months ago, mm. and then with Alan Keating, some crazy game. And then afterwards with Rob Young. Afterwards we ended up in the playing, I think two hundred, four hundred, no limit. It was me, Tom Dwan, Alan Keating, and Rob Young, mm -hmm. and uh, I was up like fifty thousand. I lost back 25 or 30, and and uh, and Rob Young's like, oh, Phil, I'm really worried about you. You're on tilt now. You're playing your hand. So I was playing super tight, and then I started opening up a little bit, which I think is okay, And uh, but he put a bad beat on me. Rob, that day, twice beat my aces with an ace on board and hold them, and he's telling me, oh, I'm really worried about you, and I'm like, Rob. I said, I'm going to win another 40, go to bed. And I did, but I had so much fun playing with Tom and uh, and Alan, uh, really good guys. And uh, and then we we messed around at the craps a little bit. We messed around at uh, kids. Baccarat. Don't do that at home. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan, and I made some money at Baccarat late, late, late in the night, seven in the morning. But it was kind of fun to play three-handed with you know two of the young great players. You know, he's still around after five years. He... <laughs> oh, I. I I love Dwan. I mean, he and I have a, a healthy respect for each other. We really, we really like each other, and so 
I was happy that he played in, in my game. Maybe that was in August. Something that you also bring up a lot is that, like, on camera, you get bluffed out here and there, but, like, you know, later on, you'll get it back and more. <laughs> Um, that I mean, I, I mentioned some of these things for on Live of the Bike too, because it's like in those post-edited games, they only show like specific ones that people they want to see because it, they're exciting. Or Live of the Bike, it's only the first four or five hours. As we know in poker, it's later on in the session when you're like adjusting or people <laughs> just lose the endurance war that you know big things happen, and that's not necessarily caught on camera. The former mayor of Madison, Paul Soglin, legend, went down to visit Castro. You know, was a mayor in like the 70s, and then was the mayor till last year. He's re he's revamped his game, and he's texting me, and I'm like, dude, this is the way it's going to be. He he's very frustrated. He's playing like me, playing super tight, folding some winners here and there, and uh, and playing really tight before the flop, and then they're trying to run us over. And that's the way I set it up. I even tell them. You can bluff me, you can bluff me, you can bluff me. But it's unbelievable. It seems like 90% of the time when I play poker, the guy that bluffs me 10 times loses all the money to me in one hand. It just keeps coming up that way. So now I laugh and joke about it. I'm like, ah, oh, you bluffed me with the seventh time. Ha, ha, ha. Well, the people at home, they only see. So they, you guys might show the seven hands I got bluffed and laugh. You won't show the tens hand where it came eight, nine, three. Oh, no, we'll and show I that. And I folded pocket tens. I had 3,000 we'll in front of me. Yeah, I know. 3,000 for me. I was watching. <laughs> and there was 4,000 in the pot, and I folded the tens because my instincts were going crazy. And sure enough, Nick had aces. Yep. Shout out to Nick for two. It was ama amazing. Like, I, all these laydowns I made. By the way, uh, did, did, did you see that? Were you there late? Jack, queen hand? What did he have? Did he bluff me there? Which? I had Jack, queen, and uh, Frank the tank. Oh, no, no. He had kings. He had kings. <laughs> I mean, another one where I folded top pair on the stream. On the you know, yeah. On the turn, the pot was massive, and I saved 3000 He had kings. It all adds up. It's unbelievable. So, I mean, I made f like four or five world-class laydowns on your show yesterday. Yeah. And it a all added up to me, uh, but, you know. Unfortunately, I took my first loss on the show, but it was only 5 k And that's, you know, Happens. I got cooled for the last seven. Even the best in the world lose sometime, right? <laughs> All right, you better ask me the last question here because my limo's been waiting for me for 15 minutes and i got to okay. go shoot the show. The very last question, uh, what do you think the Phil Helmuth branding legacy is going to be <laughs> after, <laughs> after, after you're done, after uh, you retire? What's the legacy for the Phil Helmuth brand? Hold on one second. I apologize, folks. No problem. Coming out now. Okay. Coming out now. That sounded like a, some kind of announcement. <laughs> or that too. <laughs> um, all right. When it's all said and done, the brand legacy. All done, yeah, the Phil Helmuth poker brat. Ultimate the legacy, bet everything. Listen, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the ultimate bet stuff. Luckily, luckily for me, I got people said stuff to me they should never have said to me, and then two or three years later, all the tapes came out that completely cleared me. Mm -hmm. And it was, and so just think of all those people that put all that hatred on me that said all those negative things about me, right? And none of it was true, and tapes came to prove it. So it was unbelievable, and that's why I never, that's why I give everybody a lot of leeway. I don't judge people. This next generation, everybody in their 20s, they hear one bad thing, and they spread it. It's unbelievable. And so true. I'm a little worried about the karmic consequences for this generation. They just have to be real careful what they say. and I. Just, it's all recorded, too. It's rough. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. You have all these like people that, oh... And so, I mean, I just think there's too many haters. So hopefully my legacy is, you know, about my book, Positivity. I hope if I'm remembered in 100 years, and no one's remembered in 100 years, we still talk about Babe Ruth or Truman or somebody, but if I'm remembered in 100 years, it would be in the poker industry for having, you know, 24 bracelets and being the greatest of all time. Or, um, you know, or for my book, Positivity, Eight Life Tips which Tony Robbins tells people to buy my book and all of his seminars. Cheryl Sandberg, too. Yeah. Cheryl Sandberg, amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, You know, I actually bought your first, like, I don't know if it's your first book, one of your books. It's like... Play Poker top, Like the Pros? Something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that book was a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. I bought well, it. <laughs> so that book I'm so proud of because I wrote the first 5,000 words of that, and I'm like, I can't teach poker without poker personality types. So I did that, and boom, it hits the New York Times bestseller list. Now, I wanted, I had a lifetime goal of a New York Times bestseller. 
But uh, I didn't think it would be my poker book. <laughs> I thought it would be my autobiography. Well, or something. <laughs> I mean, I've written five books, so. But the positivity one, I I feel like I'm going to sell a million copies, because it's truth. And when you sell truth, eight life tips. When you sell truth, it sells. I've been disappointed. I don't know how. Maybe I've sold ten thousand copies. I don't. It's, which is, uh, I guess, a lot in the publishing world. Guys, buy a like copy, shit. at least for trivia purposes. <laughs> but no, I mean seriously. I mean, yeah. Watched you on camera, played with you, and definitely open my eyes to like a lot of things. That listen, I think, I think there's a, such a thing. I'd like, I'd like, I think, and it sounds funny. I used to tell my wife, "Honey, the reason I am who I am is I see reality clearly." And uh, she thought, "Wow, that sounds kind of screwed up." My wife is, you know, went to medical school at the University of Wisconsin. She's a You're top Stanford, doctor, yeah. brilliant. She's like, "Well, that sounds very out there." And she couldn't decide whether that was ego, me saying I see reality clearly, um, and you know, because it sounds weird to say that. But I think all of my, all of the people that reach the highest levels in the world see reality more clearly. What does that mean? It means when they look at something, they see more than everybody else, right? Yeah. So when I look at poker strategies, I see all the mistakes everybody makes, and I see what the correct way is to play and I'll also adapt and change that's just for poker strategy but then you know I saw eight life tips that just you know one of, one of the tips is just take you write down your yearly goals and tape on your bathroom mirror I've had 20 people came to me and tell me I, they, they changed, changed their lives, lives yeah. yeah because the number one because always the number one they hit because it's right in front of them every every morning that's just one and so you know a lot of my guys, a lot of my friends at the highest at the that I'm lucky enough to be with, you know, that have already climbed the highest mountains, they also see reality more clearly. It doesn't mean that they can have a great EQ discussion about their lives. Once they're given those tools of how to discuss their lives and their ups and their downs, you know, I, I think I have more fun sitting down with uh, my friends and talking about their deepest issues because we call that the truth. And the truth is something, but half of society is afraid to tell someone they're having a bad day and the other half's afraid to hear it and say, oh, but you have this great life. No, no, they're coming to you for empathy, right? Anyway, I got to go. Okay, Phil Helmuth, thanks for coming in. That was pretty good, huh? Yeah, pretty good.